Hey everyone, this is another podcast from A Healthy New Zealand and today I have great pleasure in introducing you to Dr. Phil Maffetone. Um, Dr. Maffetone is an internationally recognised researcher, educator and author in the field of exercise, nutrition, sports medicine, biofeedback, complementary medicine, so he's a very talented man. Um, he's published over 200 papers and is the author of 20 books. And he travels and lectures extensively on these topics. And he's also very widely recognized for his success in working with athletes across multiple dis disciplines and coached many professional athletes to the highest level of their sports. So um, it's a real privilege to have you here talking to us and I'm really grateful you're going to share some of your wisdom with us. So um, welcome. Thanks, Susan. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, it's great to be here with you. Yeah. Um, you've been doing this for a very long time. I have. Uh, uh, since the 70s um, and you know you keep you keep kind of reinventing yourself to go along with the uh, the changes that take place in society and you keep studying and you keep expanding and there's no more uh, there's no more specialty um, it's one big thing and I, I learned the idea of of being holistic and undergraduate school. So um, I really put that into practice and that's why my bio is so long <laughs> because I can't help but go into different areas because everything is, is related and we need to look at the big picture if we want to build a better world. Mm. And I mean, you've been doing this stuff since I was a teenager, really. So you've been doing this stuff for a for a long time, you know, 1970s. Thanks, I'm, well, you're dating. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, so the lots of experience. Gray. And been doing it way before it was popular and way before it was commonplace as well. So, you know, right on that edge of pushing the boundaries yeah, it all was, the time. It was, uh, it was difficult. Not that it's not difficult now, um, but it was... It was really difficult, you know, in the 70s uh, to, to, to tell an athlete to not eat refined carbohydrates was, you know, they, they look at you strange, like, what? don't yeah. you read the newspapers? We should all be eating. <laughs> and the idea of, you know, um, uh, you know, exercise and working out easy rather than training hard every day or uh, mm. what, whatever the field, nutrition, exercise, uh, stress, um, we, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't know a lot about it those days, but we knew enough to know what to do and what not to do. Um, it was harder to explain. We didn't know the scientific explanations, for example, of um, how people uh, accumulate excess body fat or um, why uh, working out too hard is, is damaging for the body, but we, you know, we we knew the end result of it. But today we can talk about the physiology, and that's why I like writing the scientific papers because um, it, it's a it's an explanation for the the people who understand the biology and the science behind all of that. And um, but the bottom line is that. People like, you know, like the people listening here are interested in, in uh, you know, what can I do? And yeah. that's always been my focus is not to give people, um, uh, I, I never used diets or uh, exercise programs. What I would do instead is help people figure out how to do things for themselves because they have their own life and their own schedules and how how they fit it all in is more up to them than it is up to me but there's certain guidelines um and so helping people personalize their health and fitness is really the the theme of my my whole career 
Oh, that's, that's a really interesting approach, I think, and one that's really well worth sort of unpacking a little bit too, because I think these days everybody wants, you know, they want a program and they want a diet and they want a meal-by-meal -meal schedule and, you know, and I know I've tried to do that and then they text you or they ring you up and they go, well, I don't like that or I'm sick of eating <laughs> that or, and, you know, after a while, all this work you've put into this carefully prepared plan, you feel like, you know, throwing your hands up and saying, well, you know, you've got to take some responsibility and make some choices. That's the word, the, the, or two of them, good <laughs> words. Uh, responsibility, that's, we all have responsibility to, to, to be healthy and it's up to us. It's not up to our, uh, our doctors or, um, uh, or insurance or governmental agencies. We're in charge of our health. And the word choices is, is certainly relevant because we choose whether we consciously say, I'm going to do this uh, or not. We choose to, to really be healthy or, or not. And uh, all we can do is ho help, hope someone who we're trying to help uh, is willing to make the choice to be healthy. Because mm. people talk all the time about being healthy, you know, and they talk all the time about eating healthy. And then, you know, I often say, well, what does that mean to you? Because eating healthy means so many different things to different people. And they talk about being healthy, but it's always sort of like in short term little set boxes, you know, I'm going to do a 30 day challenge and I'll, I'll get healthy or I'm going to do dry July and get healthy. Um, and it's that I don't know. I mean, you probably understand it better than I do that it's being able to see that long term into the future that it's just a lifestyle. It's a, it, you're right. It's a lifestyle and people um, have not been taught that. We, we never learned that when we were young kids. Um, instead, what we've been learning and, and one thing we know um, about uh, formulas cookbooks is the diet trend from the going back to the 50s but certainly the 60s 70s and 80s still prevalent today but the the diet book boom was so massive so influential and people would jump from one diet to the next to the next and what we saw during this big diet boom is that the world got more and more over fat, mm -hmm. even though uh, so many people were, were on diets, some kind of diet. And when they got tired of it, they'd go to another diet. Yeah. And, and the fact that diets don't work is, is very well known, but people still do it because, you know, I, I think the problem is that um, people don't have confidence in themselves, partly because they've been miseducated. We've all been miseducated mm. by yep. companies that sell bad products. The food companies that sell junk food tell us how wonderful this stuff is. And um, uh, they have infiltrated every level of society. And so when we went to gym class, we were told that you know, we need sugar for energy. That's mm -hmm. how we have energy. So we yeah. drank a lot of sugar. And, yeah. um, you and know, start when giving we, our kids energy drinks. And, yeah, you know. yeah. And so now when we, you know, when we have business meetings, uh, what's there on the table but a bunch of candy. Mm. Uh, because people get sleepy at meetings, so they eat candy, it gives them energy. And, and, and all that couldn't be more wrong. But that's what our society has created, much like the tobacco industry created an image that smoking cigarettes was healthy. Mm. I mean, there were doctors on TV saying, you know, if you have mm. a sore throat, smoke these menthol cigarettes because they soothe your throat. And weren't they, they, they given out to women to help with 
you know, housewives to help with stress and anxiety and depression yeah, and things it, like that yeah. in the 1940s and 50s, you know? Sure. And, and nobody thought twice about it. And the tobacco companies went on for years and years and they're mm. still going on. You know, the, uh, in, in, in the Western world, mostly we've, uh, reduced smoking, um, but the tobacco industry is thriving. They're, they sell more tobacco today. They're making more money to, today than ever. Mm. So, uh, and, and likewise, the junk food industry, the sh you know, big sugar, mm -hmm. like big tobacco, has, has essentially done the same thing. They've created um, a mentality in people, and it, it whittles down to every aspect yes. of our society so we're when we're in a store and we're we're you know we're wheeling our cart and our you know three-year-old is sitting in the cart well at eye level for that three-year-old are these cute boxes of junk food cereal with mm -hmm. cartoon looking characters like mm -hmm. joe camel and of course mm. they end up in the basket in in their stomachs well i mean i think the the food industry has really taken advantage of, I think it's, it took advantage of the changes, you know, the introduction of food guidelines and then the, and then this, all this fear about fat and real fat, and then all this wanting to be low fat. And so the food industry responded. And then I guess, you know, then they started leading the way um, after that. But I think they responded to the public because I mean, I remember, I mean, it's been my whole life and studying nutrition at university, God, we were taught like eat sugar, don't eat fat. Like, you know, fat makes you fat. You know? Yeah, that's an, another <laughs> example of how they have infiltrated the scientific community. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, all, all the way through undergraduate school, I was mm -hmm. taught that the human brain is a glucose based brain and our bodies, a glucose-based body. And I had no idea that we could burn mm. fat for energy. No. What a concept. And um, and so, yeah, they, they have infiltrated society on every level, like I said, and, and um, uh, we're starting to, I think, we're starting to um, break that, partly because of the internet. People now have the ability to see what's going on. They now see that Coca-Cola executives on the, on the boards of these nutrition councils mm. is the conflict. Mm. Oh, well, we didn't know that. We suspected mm. that before, but we didn't know it. And now you can look online and you can yep. find yep. The, the New York Times article that mm. uh, exposed that. But by that point, people said, oh yeah, well, we kind of knew that already. Well how about we do something about it because that's not being done yeah but i think there's been a huge change in the last few years i've noticed i mean i i think i was a relatively early adopter of you know sort of a lower carb you know understanding that you know probably back in about 1998 i suppose so you know that was yeah you I, know I but that... but it's really changing now very quickly it, it is and and i think um looking back I, I was able to, I am able to see how uh, the level of intellect of the public about bad food, you know, went up, but then something always trashed it to go mm -hmm. back down, the food mm -hmm. companies. And they, yeah. they survey people and they, they have their pulse on society. Mm -hmm. So they know what people are thinking. And if they think that uh, you know, some ingredient is is rumored to be unhealthy. They'll change the name of the ingredient. Mm. They'll still use it, but they'll have a different name. Mm. Or they'll uh, they'll say, you know, this. Um, you know, in recent years, they'll say this product is lower in sugar or lower <laughs> in carbohydrates. Yeah. Well, okay, if you're putting, you know, twenty five grams of sugar and you lower it to 23, like who cares? But um, so I've seen, I've seen these waves of awareness 
uh, on the part of people who are really trying to be healthy. And it's often been shot down. And in the last um, 10, I'd say 10 years, there's a bigger wave. There's more people. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting, what you see is people who have been really pro-carbohydrate, anti-fat, anti-protein, just doing reverse, you know, scientists and clinicians. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that's good to see. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I, I'm, I'm writing a, an article uh, right now um, about what has happened due to COVID. So the growing awareness of unhealthy food has been building, particularly in the last 10 years, more than ever. And the, uh, the big sugar companies, you know, the big um, uh, executives who are looking at their surveys, looking at the data, um, are trying to counter this with a lot of different strategies. But suddenly COVID comes along and all of a sudden, what are the foods that people are just stealing off the shelves? It's all junk food. Mm -hmm. Restaurants are not open and the only drive-through restaurants are the junk food restaurants. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is a resurgence of, uh, of, of junk food and it's just gonna make uh, people more vulnerable for infections. It's gonna make people more over fat and it's gonna get them more addicted, which is really a big strategy in the industry for for sugar mm. and refined carbohydrates is that people actually do get addicted. And so um, this, is a, this is a real defeat from, from uh, a standpoint of the things that we've been trying to do. What's your thoughts about vegetable or oils in these processed foods? Do you think that plays a significant role as well in the health issues? You do. It sure does. Uh, the vegetable, the omega-6 oils. Yeah. Um, we're not talking about eating vegetables, which have the oils, but mm -hmm. we're talking about the concentrated form of those oils. Which are really uh, from these seeds anyway, aren't they? They're not really. A from, lot of them are from yeah. seeds. Uh, mm -hmm. Peanut oil, corn oil, um, uh, soy. And so they're, they're all the high omega-6 oils. And... Uh, and then back in the 50s, uh, they discovered a way to, to hydrogenate these oils, which made them even worse. And, um, and it took years, and although in the 50s, they knew hydrogenation was dangerous, but it never really, never really got out until the, the 90s. And then they, mm. you know, then they started really, uh, banning hydrogenated oils, but omega-6 oils are still used very frequently and they, they're they still used at home. People still cook with them, uh, not as many because the industry is seeing that less people are buying those oils in the mm -hmm. store. However, if you eat out in the restaurant, guaranteed you're going to get a, a good dose of those um, really omega unhealthy omega-6 oils. And they're, they're unhealthy because for a number of reasons. One is they promote inflammation. Yeah. And uh, two, they become rancid very easily and they, they oxidize and oxidative. Um, these oxidative chemicals can uh, speed up the aging process and just not a good thing to consume. 